Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you again today. <sighs> Yesterday was the first anniversary of my father's death. Um, it followed just six days after my mother had died last year. It didn't seem possible. I was hearing the words, but reality was hard to fathom. How could they both be gone in such a short time? And then my sister uh, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and today continues to uh, courageously battle um, her, her disease. Doing well, um, but indeed 2021 was a really difficult year for us. But you know, in 2021, I think as hard as it was, we experienced God's love and grace in such a phenomenal way. And uh, I know that we got through that difficult year because there were so many expressions of love and grace and concern that came through so many uh, of you that are listening today and, and through various communities uh, and churches um, that uh, Terry and Dee and I have been a part of uh, in, in our lifetime. So I, I just want to say uh, in, in this moment uh, a reflection that our family thanks God uh, for our parents, and we thank God for our community of faithful folks uh, who have walked with us through um, this difficult journey. Thanks be to God for all the ways that he cares for us, even in those most difficult journeys. This Sunday, um, we're going to look at the mountaintop experiences of Jesus that's recorded in Luke 9. That tells us how Jesus' appearance has changed, how his clothes become dazzling white. And in the midst of this mountaintop experience, um, Moses and Elijah appear on the scene, and um, and with Jesus are Peter, James, and John. And so that's uh, those who are gathered there in this amazing moment. And while all of them are gathered on this mountaintop experience, a cloud overshadows them, and they hear God speak, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. There is little doubt in my mind that this miraculous moment um, prepares Jesus and his disciples for their journey to Jerusalem and ultimately for Jesus' death. God was getting them ready for the hard, hard road ahead. You know, on Sunday afternoon, I watched one of the very last events in the Olympics. It was the women's 30-kilometer cross-country skiing event. Now, I had to look it up. 30 kilometers is about 18.6 miles. And the weather that day was, the announcers told us, were cold and windy. But it was so windy at times it was almost whiteout conditions. And yet these racers pressed on. Eventually, Jessica Dig Diggins from the United States would win the silver medal in this race. But it was only after the race was over that we, the viewers, understood just how impressive her effort was. Because just 30 hours before the race, Jessica had... Um, encountered food poisoning, and they weren't even sure that she'd be able to compete. And then less than halfway into the race, uh, uh, she got leg cramps, and that persisted throughout the remainder of her race. But she persisted. You know, her training uh, and all the years of experience, this would be her third medal that she had won in four years. But it really makes us think, how does someone overcome food poisoning and leg cramps to endure through such a long race like that, an hour and a half uh, in total? How did she do it? Well, like her and the other athletes, it's been the strengthening for the journey. It's their conditioning, diet, strength training, and the commitment to the sport, not just for a short period of time, but literally for years, some almost a lifetime. And because of all that preparation, all that strengthening for the journey, she was able to dig deeper than ever. And she conquered the course, all because she had gotten ready for the journey. Now, with that contemporary example, let's go back to Jesus on the mountaintop. How did he get ready for that experience? How did he get ready for his journey? Well, what we want to notice is the context of this mountaintop experience. Jesus and his disciples had gone to the mountaintop to pray. Part of this, our spiritual journey, and certainly part of Jesus' spiritual journey, was that he always made time to pray. 
It doesn't take much of a reading of the Gospels that you'll notice time and time again that Jesus goes off by himself. He takes time for prayer, to be in communion with Father, with his Father. My friends, we need to understand that prayer is essential. We need to take time, make time for prayer because it strengthens us for our journey too. And then on that mountain, Jesus was encouraged by Moses and Elijah, two of the greatest figures in the Old Testament that represent the law and the prophets. We too can be encouraged by turning to the Bible and learning from these great men and women and the wonderful stories that is provided in God's word. As we look into God's word, it will help us and strengthen us for our life journey too. And then on the mountain, perhaps we hear the simplest, of God, the simplest advice God has for all of us. When he said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Listen to him. You know, as we pray, we need to listen for the voice of Jesus and hear what he has to say in response to our prayers. As we read our Bibles, we need to listen for what God is saying through his word. We need to listen and apply it to our lives. We need to listen for what God is sharing with us through our life experiences, through his word, through our prayers. And as we listen to God, we are strengthened through our journey. So my friends, as we listen this week to Jesus' amazing mountaintop experience, we realize God was preparing him and his disciples for the journey that laid ahead for them. Likewise, the athletes that we so admired these past weeks at the Olympics, they literally prepared years for their journey to China and the ability to compete in the Olympic Games. And the same is true for us today. God is preparing us for what lies ahead. He will take our faith, our prayers, our life experiences, our struggles, our highs, and he's going to mold all of them together to strengthen us for what comes next just like he did through Jesus. Oh, man. I have several reminders uh, for us today. Uh, March 2nd, it doesn't seem like uh, it's that far away, uh, is Ash Wednesday, our beginning of our Lenten season, and we'll be having a traditional service at 7 p.m. Uh, this service marks the beginning of Lent, which is a time of reflection, self-examination, and prayer. Uh, this Sunday, uh, February 27th, uh, our Easter flower orders are due. It seems a little bit early, but that's what our florist uh, needs uh, in these unusual times uh, with supply chain still, um, you know, erratic. So we need to help our florist and uh, get our orders uh, in early. There are order forms available um, in the church lobby. And finally, Wesley Preschool uh, is well uh, on its way to accepting applications uh, for next school year. Classes are available for children aged uh, one and one and a half years old through pre-kindergarten. You can see the newsletter bulletin or website, www.wesleyum.org uh, preschool, and there you'll find additional information. Well, let's close our time with a word of prayer, and uh, thank you for visiting with me today. Let us pray. Loving God, we know that you were helping prepare Jesus for what was coming next. A tough, tough journey. Help us to trust you that you're preparing and strengthening us for what lies ahead. With your strength, send us out to do your work, to do the journey that you set before us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, thank you for visiting with me today. Let's talk again soon and may the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. Have a good day.